great to be back out in this E30 Touring. It's coming up five years since I bought it. Can't quite believe how fast the time's gone, but I've had so many great memories in this car. I suppose that kind of leads on to the question of why do I still have it? Well, I think there's a lot of sentimental value attached to this car. That's one thing, but also I just love driving it. It's not something that I drive all the time. It's definitely more of a special occasion car. I do try to use it as much as I can, especially this time of year in the summer. But yeah, it's just so great and refreshing to get back into older cars. I've always been a bit of a proponent of that. I think these days, as we've said in, in many videos, and as a lot of people say, as good and as fast as the modern cars are, the older stuff is much more raw, much more analog and more engaging. And often a lot more fun, even if it's not as fast. And that definitely rings true with the E30. So mine's a 320i, it's got the 2.0-litre M20 V20 engine. It makes a front factory about 129 horsepower, 120 foot-pounds of torque. Mine does have a chip tune, it does have a better exhaust on it, but I'm not going to claim that it's making a lot more power than stock. It might be pretty much making stock. And you know what, it feels decently quick to be honest, especially for the age of the car. You've got to remember this doesn't weigh very much, so the power goes a lot further than it might look on paper. But of course, the M20 just sounds so good. I've got a Scorpion exhaust on this. You'll have heard some of the, the sound from that already, but yeah, once you start getting this up to sort of 5,000 RPM, it really sounds good. And sort of between three and four where we are now, you can hear it starts to come alive a bit. It starts to come on cam. You can feel the power start to build. But cruising around, it's such a smooth engine as well. I mean, you can be pretty much at idle driving around town and it's just such a smooth refined engine. This isn't a car that you drive at 10 tenths. It's barely a car that you'd even drive at 7 tenths. That's not what it's about. It's much more of a cruiser, something that you can, you know, you can rev out a bit, you can enjoy the sound, but you're not going to be really sort of wringing its neck. One of the main reasons for that is the slow steering rack. And this is actually something that's talked about quite a lot with the E30s. You can, of course, upgrade that if you want to. But I really wanted to keep the car as original as possible really going for more of an OEM plus type thing. So I quite like the fact it's got the slower steering because it's really of the era, I suppose. But you know, five speed manual gearbox, the pedals are set up literally perfectly for heel and toe. This is one of the best sort of manual setups I think I've ever driven really in terms of where all the controls are. The pedals, as I say, just everything's really easy to use. The clutch feels really nice just get on with it so well and its dimensions as well are just so much smaller than modern cars there's been a three series touring it it feels tiny getting in this after some of the modern stuff but you can just thread it around these small country roads and enjoy it okay let's go for second gear here as we come out of these turns Sounds so nice. Like I say, it's not quick. I'm flat on the floor. It's building speed up this quite steep hill, but not ridiculous amounts. Yeah, it's lovely.
So what is it like owning a classic BMW in 2024? Well, I think this is something I've alluded to in previous videos, but in general, there's just so much appreciation for these 1980s BMWs, in particular the E30 platform. I think it's a car that a lot of people can relate to, whether they've sort of grown up with this era of BMW or whether they just respect it for what it is, which is really the position I'm in. The design is just so classic BMW. You know, we've got these sharp lines. Of course, we see today the way that car styling has gone. It's really gone out to the far edge of what most people actually deem to be sort of good looking. And there's so many fake vents and sort of weird styling cues. I think especially with modern day BMW that the older cars just obviously don't have. So for me, I can just appreciate really the simplicity of these older cars. Of course, another thing is that the E30 has really become a true icon. I think in particular in the last five years, you just seem to see these cars featuring everywhere now, almost harking back to the 1980s. And again, just this era of BMW in general. The E30 actually turned 40 years old a couple of years back, having been released back in 1982. So that's also pretty cool. Of course, another thing about my particular car being a Touring, it's just so usable and practical. There's actually really a great amount of space in the rear of this car. The seats will fold flat, you can put loads of stuff in it. So it just means it's the kind of thing that you can actually use in a lot more scenarios than you, know, you might think for an older vehicle. And I really, really like that about it. It'll also happily carry four people, five if you wanted to. So again, there's just very few compromises with using a car like this in 2024. Unfortunately, I think the only real issue with cars like this is the government really doesn't take to them lightly in the UK and they actually tax them at quite a high rate. So the road tax on this is relatively high compared to other cars. It's not absolutely ridiculous, but it's just something you've got to factor in. On the other hand though, parts of this car are still readily available. You can still get them easily. They're not ridiculously expensive. So actually it means maintaining them is fairly easy and it can be done on a relatively low budget as well, which is always a good benefit. Of course, as well, with this car being around for so long and there have been so many of them made in the first place, you've got a wealth of knowledge online. There's loads of forums, there's Facebook groups with people that just know so much about the E30 Generation 3 series. And you can do so much in the aftermarket as well. You know, people do engine swaps, all of that kind of stuff to really make these cars exactly what you want it to be. I think I've said previously in other videos that there is very much an E30 for everyone's needs. Some people make these into drift cars, some people make them into race cars, some people make them into fast road cars, some people like me just leave them basically standard. So you can really do whatever you like with it and that's what makes this platform so good. I guess, what are some of the things I've done then in my ownership? Well, I've certainly not done a full restoration. That is not on the cards right now, but what I have been trying to do is just kind of gradually go through the mechanicals of it. So when I first bought the car, it did the timing belt, I refreshed some of the cooling system, some of the ignition system, just to kind of make sure that everything is running properly. Obviously the timing belts on these M20 engines do need to be changed fairly regularly. So I wanted to keep on top of that. So obviously I had the oil changes, filter changes, all of that sort of stuff. More recently, I've pretty much gone through the entire braking system. So it's had new discs, pads, calipers, and a lot of the hard lines and all of the soft lines replaced. And that definitely made a bit of a difference. The old, the old brakes were just a bit worn out and I was starting to get a bit of seizing of the calipers as well. So made sure all of that was sorted out. I obviously put the Scorpion exhaust on it. That was a few years ago now, but it made a huge difference to the sound of it just really means you can properly hear that M20 inside the car and it is quite a loud system it can maybe be perhaps a little bit obnoxious at times but I really like the sound of it let's see what she's got here yeah it's not slow it's really quite quick actually if you get it on a flat piece of road and up in the higher rpms it, it does build up speed nice and quick I've also done a bit of work on the rear suspension it's had some new shocks and springs and the front suspension is definitely on the cards for a bit of a refresh soon. And I think once all the mechanical stuff is really sorted out, we'll probably turn some attention to the bodywork because that's always something you've got to be wary of. 
there's very little rust on this car but there is certainly a few areas that in the near future are going to need looking at wheel arches are one and a little bit on the rear tailgate as well but really what i want to do with that is do the whole car in one go and get all the paint sorted as well just to make it look fresh and you know to get everything done in one go really it just makes a lot more sense but as i say i very much intend this to be an oem plus kind of vehicle don't intend to throw loads of power at it eventually maybe the engine will get a couple of upgrades but certainly not on the priority list because the power level is perfectly adequate for how i want to use the car and of course there just seems to be so much appreciation for the e30 generation the amount of conversations i've had with people just when filling up the car with fuel or just being out and about people admire these cars and really appreciate i think the fact that people are still using them and keeping them on the road which is i guess the important thing for us enthusiasts really so yeah it's fair to say i've really enjoyed my first five years with this car i certainly have no intentions of getting rid of it and i'm really just looking forward to using it more and as much as i can in the future as well if you want to see more on this car check out the playlist linked above we've got loads of videos on it anyway i hope you've enjoyed this video i'll catch you very soon